Welcome to my thoughts on Scream Queen Season 2, Episode 2, Warts and All. So, spoilers for this episode and all the ones leading up to it. Another episode I absolutely love. Let us dive right in. Just going to real quick remind you, please support SAC After Strike. There is a link to donate in the description box, as well as links that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, yeah, we open on the aftermath, and I will say I'm very relieved that, indeed, you know, I I, I mentioned in, you know, in my video on the previous episode, basically, maybe they did kill number five, Maybe it was just, like, maybe she passed out, you know, kind of thing. Really, really glad she's still around. I would very much miss her character, if if not. So, yeah. Um, she's a suspect. And the the cop, the, the, yeah, the detective, played by Jocelyn Ayana, is just, like, I love what she's writing down, you know, the, the... Suspect keeps changing her story. Suspect can't keep motive. You know, can't. Yeah, just that is a truly amazing, and I really appreciate later in the episode when you know I, f I forget exactly who, but someone says, "Call the cops." No, don't. They're idiots. In this move, in this show's universe, and in slasher movies, yeah, the cops are are just completely incompetent as opposed to overfunded and violent you know white supremacists <laughs> um officer one question do you have to pass high school to be a detective no you do not yeah I I um I yeah I get the sense that this is a detective who did in fact not pass high school and I love that the Chanel's, they come in guns blazing. They are 100% convinced that number five is, is guilty. Just, yeah. <laughs> and the, you know, the thing with trying to figure out what exactly does Tyler look like, you know, maybe like a toad. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like toad genealogy. Some Someone in his family is related to toad, you know, yeah. I'm not being mean, I'm being brash and confident. <laughs> yeah, you just, you keep telling yourself that, you know. And I really love, you know, okay, so this is a good, bad, good news, bad news scenario. The good news is we know exactly how to treat this thing. Uh, uh, before you celebrate, you, you didn't wait for the bad news. The bad news, we don't have that machine. <laughs> I think this might have been a case where opening with the bad news might have been the the better, just, yeah. And, yeah, Zayday is, of course, wondering why is Kathy Munch doing this? And <laughs> Chanel number one likes to order a lot of popcorn and then throw it on the floor. Wow, just, yeah. And and the you know the hand yet again out of control, and you know he he gropes her really suddenly, and she says, "I haven't been manhandled in two years." Oh God, that's so wrong. Chanel number five explains that her first boyfriend. I mean, I yeah, Richard Grieco's hair, yeah. This, Unfortunately, you know, but he was imaginary, though. He broke up with her. How does that even happen? Like, that's, that is a, like, the, the scale for how bad your self-confidence is has gotten a new low. You know, my imaginary boyfriend broke up with me. That's, that's the, holy crap. That's, uh, yeah. And, yeah, um, number five becomes determined that she's going to raise the money to get him the laser. Really love the 360-degree shot of Chanel number one. 
and the the intermittent screaming and the elevator door opens ominously and the red devil attacks and it's Chad and it turns out Chad was the one who you know at the end of season one at the asylum that was Chad and I appreciate the detail we didn't actually see him like like you know if if he actually if the red devil at the end of season one actually like stab Chanel it'd be like would Chad really do that you know but yeah he <laughs> he's a really screwed up individual so yeah he thought it was funny to attack his traumatized girlfriend by posing as the serial killer that's been a trying to attack uh, trying to kill her you know so so yeah it's, you know, it, it's, um, I've only watched the episode once, but I do remember he. We don't see him like stab her. I think he raises the axe and then it like cuts. So you know, it's, yeah, I one hundred percent believe that Chad would would do that. And you know, it turns out no, you know, he he didn't just show up just for show number one. He's you know, he's there because his his friend Randall needs you know yeah needs needs the the care of the the hospital and yeah and then we see that that Chad you know it's not really surprising that he's upset that Dr. Holt is you know really making a strong impression on Chanel I got to say I mean I know I I you know, I stand by. I love Chad in, in the first season. Now that he's, like, super jealous and being really petty and just, like, constantly trying to one-up Dr. Holt, I love him so much more. This is amazing. I don't know how they came up with, but that really is just... He was already incredibly funny. But him, like, jealous... Of this, like, I don't know, 40-year-old, just canonically, like, Chanel is, like, college age. So, Dr. Holt is literally, like, old enough to be her father. And Chad feels so threatened by this guy, instead of being like, you know what, if... If you want someone who's that much, like, it's fine. You know, May-December relationships, do, do you, you do you, or your, your partner, your partner do you, however you feel like, you know. I'm just saying, I wouldn't try to compete with someone who's attracted to someone old enough to be their, their parent. That's like, you know what, I, this is, this is not at all, Mike, it just, yeah. And... <laughs> Dean Munch's comment about how, you know, they, they talk about, you know, fighting over, <laughs> fighting over Chanel's boobs because, you know, the doctor only groped one of them and the, the you know, Chad had sex with her and, and all the, you know, and, and Kathy Munch is like, you can resume the fight over Chanel's boobs later, although I feel like it'll be like the Falklands. A lot of battle over very little land. And it's just, oh god, that's so wrong. And... I love that RBG was on this trip, and she's apparently an incredible, like a crack shot, and just, yeah... And, and, <laughs> um, was it Liz, Liz Cheney, I feel like, although this was at, you know, now Liz Cheney is, like, she actually did try to, to push back against Trumpism, so that was, you know, but this episode was, like, before that, so, you know, Kathy Munch is like, oh, I hope she's okay, no, I don't, she's awful. And back then, that was absolutely true, and she's still kind of awful, you know. And the, let's see, yeah, and, and, um, number five makes a video to raise money for the laser, and just, yeah, 
it truly is terrible. Like that is a an abysmal video for for the just yeah. I I do really appreciate the 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 song choice and the just yeah. And you know, Chanel number one points out, you know, if you date him now you you know you stood by him while he was at his tumoriest then it'll you know you'll be in love forever or he'll he'll stand by with you uh, he'll stand by you after he becomes hot again and yeah so Zayday and Jackson are like you know the the yeah there's no information in the Ah, what's it called? In the in the files on the computer at the, the computers at the hospital, you know, it was all removed. So you know they have to go to the library, which is a nice creepy, you know, oh, there's definitely going to be an attack on the library. Oh, well, let's, let's not go to the library. Let's stay here in this already really creepy place. You know, just, yeah. And and the, you know, microfiche, you know, don't you need a machine for that? It's in the basement, you know, just, like, as if it wasn't creepy enough already, just let's see. And, and you, you find yourself wondering, I mean, Usually the black character dies first, but there's two of them, so not quite alone. Do they cancel each other out? You know, just and yeah, we learned that the staff was killed on Halloween in '86, so one year exactly to the day after the tragic death of the patient. They didn't feel like you know getting credit for not being able to save. You know, again, just. Yeah, this is I've I've seen so many horror movies where you know slasher movies especially where it's like, you know, something happened and then on the anniversary, you know, there was a serial killing kind of thing, you know, just Halloween, Friday the 13th. Um I can't believe I'm blanking on the title. There's that other that Valentine is also anniversary killing, you know, just, yeah, Scream, some some of the Scream movies at least, I forget if, I'm not sure it's all of them, but at least some, there's anniversary killing going on, and and that is a great, like, you know, one guy is like lying down, and he, his throat is cut by the, is that a machete, so, something, thrown, cuts the throat, goes into the, the, like, torso of another guy, it just, yeah, and, you know, once the, the, you know, it's, I do hope we see more of Jerry O'Connell's Dr. Mike, but it wouldn't be the first time that they do flashbacks after we've been told the character has died. The, yeah, you know, once he's dead and Nurse Thomas, Laura Bell Bundy, you know, she's, she's by herself, you know, it's her and the Green Meanie. And the music, I think we're alone now. Just beautiful. Just so, so well done. Let's see. And and as the, um, you know, Zayday and Jax... Actually, now I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Someone is, like, leaving and... Yeah, Zayday is definitely there. And, like, Nurse... Um, hmm. I swear, uh, there, um, Ingrid, Ingrid Awful is, you know, she, she like, she's now just, like, there, she pops up, like, pops into frame the way that people do in slasher movies to make you think that it's the killer, and she asks about the schedule of the Chanel's, but not Zayday, even though she, too, is not yet a, a doctor, you know, just makes it super obvious that she's, you know, she wants information so that she can, um, what's it called? So that the, so that she can better attack the, the, the Chanel's. Like, it just, 
she's doing a terrible job hiding that, and I'm I'm here for it. And the oh that's right yeah um yeah so the let's see yeah and and Chad is so determined to do the you know asserting dominance in the the like locker room kind of thing that he goes to shower in the employee area like it's like you don't work here what are you doing <laughs> you, know, just, you know just so so that he can confront dr holt and just and and he keeps like ripping the the curtain open and holt keeps closing it again just really really funny and apparently it's his third shower of the day just to be ready for emergency sex and let's see. Yeah, I <laughs> I really like you know, he near the end, Chad says, before this gets more homoerotic and Dr. Holt is like, I'm gonna stop it right there. I don't think that's possible, you know. And just yeah, that's really, really funny. And yeah, he's you know, let's let's play squash and the you know, handshake. I think our wieners just touched. And, yeah, and, and number five explains, you know, okay, so the reason that people don't believe that I was, you know, that, that I'm not the killer, that I was attacked, is because I respond to the same, to a lot of things with the same level of intensity. And, you know, she actually stands up for, for Tyler when the, you know, some, some guys, like, you know, mock him. And, you know, at first it's like, oh, that's kind of sweet, holy crap, you know, she, like, smacks one of them in the back of the head. Like, the moment that you see it, you, you, you know, you kind of hope that for once she'll be reasonable and, and just, like, you know, just, like, verbally berate them or something. But she, like, yeah, attacks with a plate and just, yeah. And then she explains... Sometimes I react very harshly since I stopped taking my medication, which is, yeah. Let's see. And. Yeah, the. the yeah, we learn, you know, Kathy Munch, the reason that she did this hospital thing, financing it and everything, is to save her own life. And, 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 um, Huffle, Huffle is, like, squeezing up against the glass, listening, and rubs her hand across, it's just like, yeah, like a, like a slasher killer. And, let's see. Right, and I do briefly want to point out, you know, obviously in real life, there shouldn't be, like, we shouldn't stigmatize people who need psychiatric care, including medication. I laugh because it's a trope of, like, slasher movies, you know, in slasher movies, if someone has, like, mental problems, th there's a pretty good chance they're a serial killer, As, you know, obviously in real life it's absurd, Studies show that you're actually much more likely to be the the target than the perpetrator of uh, an attack. But yeah, let's see. And the let's um, right the right the the green meanie attacks. Kathy Munch and she again fights back quite well. I like how all she has to use is like these papers to just yeah. And you know, she manages to subdue Green Meanie. And then, you know, uh, uh Ca Cassidy and number three come up and you know ask questions and she's like, oh he's and looks down and you know, body's gone, he's at the elevator. 
Okay, from now on, when someone has successfully subdued the killer, maybe not the time to distract them with questions, you know, just... And again, like, there's so many slasher movies where it's like, okay, they stopped... Oh, no, never mind. They're gonna get distracted. They're, you know, the... the they're not gonna act on it immediately and the killer gets away or manages to attack them again or something. And... And they're like, you know, okay, so we cured Randall. And then he's screaming again, um, maybe I whipped the thing too fast. It just, yeah. And Denise Hemphill is still certain that Zayde is the, the game. I, is it like, yeah, I, I feel like I've heard, like, the, there's a thing of, like, you know, some black women feel threatened if there's... You know, so they'll, they'll, like, think that, you know, in, instead of, you know, solidarity, they'll, they'll attack, sometimes just verbally, each other. Let's see. And I really appreciate, you know, so the first thing they teach you at Quantico, if you're a star student, and something I've learned from watching movies about Quantico and the TV show, Quantico, which is currently in its second excellent season, you know, just, yeah, <laughs> and, and it's, again, it's this, it's essentially sort of meta-commentary, because, like, in a lot of slashers, the, you know, someone comes in with something, you know, some, some kind of brilliant, you know, something you learn as a cop kind of thing, but a lot of, like, your average Joe doesn't know from, like, hasn't had, like, cop training, so they know stuff from these movies and TV shows, and here's a TV show about someone who has had training, but the thing they learned it from was movies and TV, you know, so it's just great, uh, yeah. And I really, really love Chad doing mind games against Dr. Holt. Why are you still in a teaching hospital? Were you held back or something? <laughs> just amazing. Let's see, and, yeah, and the thing with, you know, oh, I see, you, you know, it's almost like a, a samurai thing, you know, or, uh, wait, I guess not a samurai, there's a, there's a trope in, like, kung fu movies and such, you know, I see, you know, this style of martial arts as well, you know, and, so he's like, I see, you grew up playing squash as well, you know, since you're so good, oh, I've only been playing for the last two years, <laughs> Right, and then we, yeah, that actually turns out to be the, the, yeah, because it was the, like, yeah, we later learned that the hand is from the squash player, so he told Richard, no dick since Nixon, that, you know, oh, he's only known it for two years, that's when he got the hand, maybe that's a thing, you know. And that was also funny because it's like, you know, dick, like private dick, you expect, to, yeah. What are you talking about? I called you dick because you're late. And, let's see. But yeah, you know, Holt warns Chad, you know, my hand can do much more than just play squash. Really. <laughs> Which is like, you know, like we've heard... You know, we th there. There's a lot of it's a it's a it's a common movie and TV phrasing of a threat. You know, push me and you'll see what I'm capable of, kind of thing. But he's saying, you know, yeah, I know I'm good at squash, but you know, just it's <laughs> good at squash is not very threatening, not not intimidating. Let's see and. And yeah, they go to to talk to uh, Hester. So glad she's back. I was I was a little bit worried that she was only going to be in the first episode of the season, but no, they do like just yeah. For, first, we have the you know they're they're heading down the the hall you know down at the end of the hall. You'll be fine, you know. And there's a guy there excited to see this young woman 
and a substance flings out of his hand into her hair. I didn't need a, I, I didn't know I needed a PG-13 version of that scene. You know, I can smell your see you next Tuesday. But boy, I did the show. The show knew. You know, there's uh, people writing and directing. It's just that's amazing. And and you know, number three helps get it out of number one's hair, and also licks or things. This is frosting. Frosting's delicious. You know, just. And let's see. Yeah, and we learn, you know, Hester knew about the attacks. And in fact, you know, she has something really big to, to share, you know. Quid pro quo, quo, Clarice. Did she get what she was having? Just absolutely love it. And, and like, it's, you're insane. Oh, I'm not finished. <laughs> You are speaking insane things. And, oh, by the way, I have ridiculous requirements as well. You know, those products have, uh, you know, haven't been made for over 10 years. Well, hit up Craigslist. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, and then, you know, Tyler and number five back from the date. And, you know, Noisemaker and, you know, um, I forget what they're called. But, you know, there's there's stuff on through the air. It's like, congratulations. You, you know, you went past what society deformed. Society has decided is considered hideous. And you've discovered true love. And your number five is like, okay, thank you. And, oh, we were testing Tyler. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, and... and Dick arrives, and apparently Chad specifically had him go around showing the dick pic to a bunch of women. And the, all the girls I showed it to said it was very nice, but it kind of leans. And it's, oh, okay, well, what about the other thing? And, yeah, it turns out that the, the hand is from this serial, you know, squash champion who killed 600 people through Craigslist. You know, thankfully he was kind of an idiot because he kept using Craigslist, so they tracked him through that. Anyway, and it is like, I mean, after a while, it's like, um, I'm pretty sure this is a common, you know, everyone that has been found dead here, you know, contacted through Craigslist, it's just, yeah. And he killed the ones... <laughs> He was amazing at the game, but he felt it was an insult to the game he loved so much that these other guys were losing, so he killed them for it. And it's like, he knows it's a, like, there's only, there's only ever one winner. It's not like, it's impossible for, for both players of a squash game to win. Uh, I mean, I guess, unless you're playing with Radwell House Rules, where the horse gets in the water with you, just like... Amazing, just absolutely amazing. You know, like he's like, okay, I'm I'm a genius at this game. I want to play against someone else. They lost okay, the you know, chopping block. Just like I think you may have misunderstood how this is supposed to just yeah, so so yeah, that's the hand that he has, and you know, the last thing he was eating when they arrested him was the exact same thing that the hand wrote on the on the notepad. Just amazing. Just yeah. So so it is like this thing, oh you know, there's muscle memory. It remembers that the rest of the body liked to eat, you know, just it's completely absurd, of course. You know, in real life, there's you know, but it's 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 like there's fears about like donation of of like body parts you know people freak out about that so there's some stories told and some of them very memorable you know the Chinese the eye is quite good the Jessica Alba remake is mostly garbage let's see
but I already did videos on both of those. See. Yeah, and and we learned that, you know, that that you know comment about you know earlier in the episode, uh, Munch was like, so does anybody know a New Guinea restaurant? It's like you know, and Sadie's like, is that even a thing? And, and I'm also like, I mean, I've heard of exotic ones, I've never heard of an specific New Guinea, you know, turns out she went to New Guinea, she wasn't supposed to, but her idiot travel agent accidentally sent her to, oh, it was a, you know, there was, it was a great party, it was delicious, oh, it was a funeral, and she has Kuru, it just, yeah, that's, oh my god, they keep pushing it, they keep finding more ways, new, new ways to be even more offensive, like, Canonically, Kathy Munch has tasted human flesh, like human brain. Just wow, and and yeah, you know, less than a year to live, and we see that Hoffel knows about it, and you know, she might be able to use it against her. And <laughs> number five explains to Tyler, you know, okay, so that's when they told me, yes, they are technically my birth parents, but I'm not supposed to tell anyone. But I feel like I can trust you with it, you know, which, yeah, that's, we already knew that they absolutely hate her. That, you know, we learned that in season one. Let's see. Right, and, and Tyler is like, okay, you know, because he's like obsessed with, with Encyclopedia Brown, you know, so this is, it's not that, oh, this is, you know, a um, message board, you know, whatever, not a big deal. Sometimes he likes the frequent. No, 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 this is his favorite one. He's on so many that this is, he has a favorite, you know, and, oh, I, I learned something new about the killer. Oh, this is a game changer. Oh, wait, nope, someone's wheeling me away, for, you know, bye, just, yeah, and, and, you know, number five asks, number three and, and Chanel, do you know anything about Tyler's operation being moved? No, uh, that can't be, because Cascade and Holt went home to have a handsome contest. Oh, yeah, yeah with the, um, they try on all outfits, see who who's more handsome, which, like, 100%, I believe that. Honestly, I don't even know if that's, like... I would not rule out that Taylor Lautner and John Stamos, maybe not, like, together, but I could imagine, like, every so often they have a handsome contest with some other guy. Like, just, yeah. And as the the laser is taken to, you know, it, it's, it's great. Like, at the start of the episode, it's like, okay, so we need a laser. Ah, uh, money, though. And over the course of the episode, number five tries raising the money, then Chanel says, oh, I, you know, I got the money by tricking Chad. And then the, the, which also, you know, shines a spotlight on the disturbing, like, you know, everyone has their preference, whatever. Chad, many guys, they're like, you know, preferably as little hair down there as, as possible. But he's like... He wanted to spend an obscene amount of money just to make sure that she would never again have any hair down there. That's pathological. That You have a problem, Chad. And and just, yeah, so, you know, so yeah, now they have the laser. The, they're going to do the surgery, but then the, the killer uses the laser. And it's, it's one of those wonderful movie lasers that, like... Oh, yeah, it can, like, you know, do, like, a, a medical procedure. Also, it can cut you in half. You know, just, there's, like, there's a there's a thing you just turn to increase the intensity, and it'll just cut you. Like, like nothing, just, you know, hot knife through butter. Just, yeah. <laughs> As someone who's received physical therapy treatment that involved a laser, that's not, like... You can't just, they're different lasers, you know, there is, there are lasers that can cut through flesh just like that, but the ones that are used for, for just, anyway, but, but yeah, very, very funny, and, you know, as, so, so, you know, the three Chanel's are all aware, you know, okay, 
the, you know, we gotta get to Tyler before the green mini kills him. Holding out for a hero plays is wonderful. Just, yeah. Let's see. And, yeah, and, and, you know, Chanel notes we were dealing with another serial kill, which, you know, technically, she didn't know yet that, yeah, and actually, yeah, I suppose it's possible that that's not the same killer, you know, it's been 30 years, you know, 30 years with no killing, that's, you know, what, what serial killer with any self-respect would wait that long, you know, but, but yeah, so... For sure, they're dealing with a serial killer. It just, yeah. Uh, I don't have much more to say about the episode. I really want to underline Colton Haynes, who plays Tyler. Amazing performance. Like, again, you know, his entire face is covered with this makeup. And he says, oh, it's been two years. You know, and he legitimately does feel like, oh, this is just what I look, you know, like, I I don't know how you not, like, scratch or, like, you know, just, like, it, it's got to be super uncomfortable, and he completely sells it, and just, and also, like, the, the you know, yeah, looking looking at his headshot here on, on, oh, he's done other horror stuff, cool. Teen Wolf. Very cool. I'd like to see him in more stuff. Arrow, American Horror Story. Yeah, I I am aware that there is some there is some overlap between the Brian Murphy show and their casts. Anyway, um, like we see a little bit in the episode as well. In real life, he is handsome, you know. So for him to pretend that he, you know, because when like in the in the diner when the other two guys are like insulting him, he really does look like, you know, he doesn't look like whatever. I'm still handsome. He legitimately looks like oh, you know, just, it's, he he looks like he he comes across as someone who's been dealing with this for two years. So so that's yeah. Um, let's. See. I, I really hope we get more of Brian Baumgartner's Richard, no dick since Nixon. Just, yeah, really, really fun. And, and it also just, like, he looks like a private investigator, you know? It's just, he completely sells, he has that vibe, you know? And... You know, I mean, now that he has gotten the scoop on Dr. Holt, maybe Chad won't need him more. I, I'm hoping that they'll find some way to, to get him back in. Looking forward to seeing more of Hester. You know, there's no way this is the last appearance this season. So, just, yeah. Leia Michelle, just great job with the, with the crazy eyes and the, just, yeah, really, really, yeah, it's like, Okay, fine. Here, have some chapstick. Just yeah. And right, as as Ingram Hoffel, really glad Kirstie Alley. Like you know, there was, you know, she had like a really significant. You know, she had like a career in in like the eighties, and let's see, you know, there's she's been in stuff since, but it hasn't been quite the same level. I I think she's done really well. You know, she's it, yeah, a couple of things I've seen her in. Drop Dead Gorgeous, Without a Trace, and this I guess are the the only ones. I think she does incredibly well here. You know, she's she's transitioned very smoothly into this. Like she's really good. Oh, oh right, she's also in Village of the Damned. I remember her as being pre in the, the remake. I remember her as being pretty good in that. She's transitioned very smoothly into this thing of... Although I guess... Let's see, that was 95. I'm not sure her career had quite transitioned yet. But but yeah, in 99, she was 100%... Like, you know, in, in, in Drop Dead Gorgeous, she, like, she's the, the mother of the Denise Richards character. And she is so like, obsessively, like, pushy, and just really, really, just, uh, yeah. By the way, that's a movie. If you haven't watched that in a while, go back and watch. There's, like, every young actor, like, you know, you might remember that Kirsten Dunst and Denise Richards are in it, 
you might have forgotten that Brittany Murphy and Amy Adams are as well. Like, it's, it's yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, just, uh, Kirstie Alley does such a great job in, in that, and, yeah, great here, and, and it is this kind of thing, like, it feels very natural for her to have this, oh, wow, um, R.I.P., wow, I didn't realize, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize she had passed, um, uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, anyway, she was uh, incredibly talented. I'm I'm really glad she got to be on this show uh, before she passed. And, but but yeah, just you know, the the yeah. So this was one of the last things she did. There there might be some people who've only this is the only thing they've seen her in. This is a pretty good closing out. Let's see. Other than this, she was in The Goldbergs and You Can't Take My Daughter. And she was in a short called L'Impressioniste, um, which is completed but not hasn't been released yet. It looks like, but but yeah, you know, just she she did an incredible job here. I'm I'm really really glad that they cast her. Just the the you know yeah, they realized that she's really really good at playing this. Can you know we we don't know at at this point in the the season we don't know yet if she actually is like dangerous or if it's just like I mean the fact that she wanted the Chanel schedules maybe she just wanted to avoid them you know it's not it doesn't necessarily mean you know it's not, it's not like she's you know got a chainsaw under her bed which oh actually no Zayday did in season one wasn't a killer so yeah um it, it is actually this sort of thing of you know you could it's, it's again she's one of many characters on this show, almost every major character, I guess every major character, where it's like, I mean, they might be the killer, I don't know, I, I, I'd I, like to think they're not, but there's, every so often they'll say something, or there'll be like a look, or something, that makes you think, just, yeah. Um, you know, I feel like Drop Dead Gorgeous was her audition for this role. Yeah, um, that's everything I have to say about this episode. Um, continue to really love the show. Uh, yeah, catch you next week. Keep screaming, queens.